Today we're going to continue with our combining like terms. Um, we started this Friday and we talked about <clears throat> a coefficient is the number that goes along with the variable and a variable is a letter that represents an unknown number. <clears throat> For instance, if we, if we had <clears throat> 5a, then 5 would be the coefficient and a would be the variable. And we don't know what this A stands for. It can be any number. It could be two, it could be negative 50, it could be a million. We don't know what it is and therefore we cannot solve unless we have an equal sign. But we can simplify our expressions. And we talked about that expressions are <clears throat> number sentences without an equal sign. So they are not solvable but they are simplifiable. And eventually we will get to solvable equations where we have an equal sign and we can solve for what the variable is. But right now we're working on simplifying these expressions to work up to um, solving equations. So let's say we had 5a plus 2b squared minus 6a plus 12. Now this is an expression. I know it's an expression because there is no equal sign. And I can't solve for the variable a or the variable b squared. But I can make it a little easier by going ahead and combining um, my like terms. Like terms again are terms that have the same variable or they may have no variable. So we have like terms here. We have 5a and we have negative 6a. And it's very important <clears throat> that you pay attention to the signs because this is a positive 5a and a negative 6a. So a positive 5 and a negative 6 is equal to negative 1. Um, if we came down here and we wrote positive 5 plus negative 6a, we would know that our signs are different. Difference means subtract, and we would get negative 1a. So we can combine these two terms and get negative 1a. Then we would look back up here and see, do I have any other terms that I can combine? I have a positive 2b squared. I don't see any other numbers that are that have the variable b squared so i'm just going to bring it straight down <clears throat> and i also have positive 12. i see no other regular numbers so i'm simply going to bring it down so this expression is equal to negative 1a plus 2b squared plus 12. And this equal sign here does not mean that I'm solving the equation, but it means that it's equivalent. Equivalent means that it's the same. So this looks a little easier to solve than this two. This does just because it's shorter. Let's try another one. <clears throat> and you can make these expressions as long as you can. They could go as long as the road outside, but we're not going to make them that long, don't worry. So let's say we had 2x plus negative 5q minus 3 plus 5x minus 2q. We can simplify this by finding our like terms. I'm going to start with 2x, and I'm going to look for any other numbers that have the variable x. So this is an x, and that's a positive 2x, and I also have this positive 5x. So here I have, I'm going to skip down here so I can show you, positive 2x plus positive 5x, and this is just like um, what we've been doing previously, 
we check our signs. They're both positive, so that means I'm going to add and I'm going to get 7x. Now I'm going to go back up here and see if I have any other like terms. I see my next term is a q. So I see I have another q over here. So I have negative 5q and negative 2q. So if I have negative 5q and I add negative 2q, my signs are the same, which means I'm going to add and I'm going to get negative 7q. So I go back up here and I already have my 7x from this one and I add my negative 7q. And of course we could also put 7x plus negative 7q and we know it's going to be the same thing. And lastly I'm going to look back and see if I have any other like terms. I don't, but I do see I have this negative 3 and I can't just throw it away, so I'm going to bring it down. So this is what this means. 2x plus negative 5q minus 3 plus 5x minus 2q is equivalent to 7x minus 7q minus 3. It all means the same thing. So this long expression is the same thing as this short expression. So this looks easier to solve than this because this is a really long looking equation. Expression, I'm sorry, expression. Okay, let's try another one. <clears throat> this time let's try 10y um, minus 2y squared plus 5y minus 25 plus 3y squared plus 6y. Now that looks like a really long expression, but we can simplify it by making it shorter. Okay, so I'm going to look and see, do I have any more y's? I see that I have positive 10y positive 5y and I also have a positive 6y. Now why am I not including these y squares squared? Because it is not exactly the same. In order to be able to combine like terms they have to be the same. So y is not the same thing as y squared. You ask me why. Well let's say <coughs> that y is equal to 2. If y is equal to 2, that means that 10 times 2 would be 20. But if y is equal to 2, this says y squared. So that really means if y is equal to 2, that we would multiply it times itself. 2 times 2 is 4. So this y would be equal to 4, not 2, because it is squared. So always remember, it has to be exactly the same. So if we skip down here and we have 10y plus 5y plus 6y, all of our signs are the same. So we're going to add them all together. So we have 10y plus 5y is 15y, and 15y plus 6y is 21y. So 21y. Now we need to look and see if we can simplify even further because we can't just throw these away because we haven't used them. So here I see negative 2y and uh, I'm sorry negative 2y squared and positive 3y squared. So if I do negative 2y squared plus positive 3y squared. My signs are different, which means I'm going to subtract. 3 minus 2 is 1, and you keep the y squared. And I keep the sign of my largest absolute value, which is plus. So I'm going to bring that up here. Plus 1y squared. And then I look up here. This is the only one I don't have boxed in. 
so I'm just going to bring it down. So 10y minus 2y squared plus 5y minus 25 plus 3y squared plus 6y is equivalent to 21y plus 1y squared minus 25. And I would also like to point out that this 1y could also be written like this, <clears throat> 21y plus y squared minus 25. So you may see it with the one in front of it, but many times they do not write the one in front of it, and it's just simply a y squared. Why do you think that would be? Well, because one times anything is gonna be the other number. If y is equal to five, uh, five squared would be 25, and 25 times one would be 25. If y was equal to two, two times two would be four, and four times one would be four. So they don't always write the one there, but you know that there, if there's just a variable there, that the coefficient is one. Okay, let's do a couple more and then I'll let you get started on your work. <clears throat> Today we're gonna be working on just simplifying these expressions. Tomorrow we're gonna be talking about the distributed property. Um, <clears throat> which is just an extra step, but we need to get used to doing this first before we throw in that distributive property. So this time, let's say we have 6g minus 2 plus 6h minus 12g minus 15 plus 2h. So that looks like a really long expression, but we can simplify it. So first I'm going to look for g's, and I see that I have another g here. It's super extra important that you include the sign. So skip down here. We have 6g, and it's positive, and we're going to add negative 12g. So my signs are, the, are different, so I'm going to subtract, and I'm going to get 6g, and I keep the sign of my largest absolute value, which is negative 6g. So, I'm going to go ahead and put an equal sign here for equivalent, and I'm going to put the negative 6g here this time, because we're copying it there anyway. That'll just take some steps away. Okay, next in line, I see I have a regular integer. It's a negative 2, so I'm going to look for other regular integers, which, which by regular, I mean they just don't have a variable. So I have negative 2 and negative 15. So I'm going to write that down here. Negative 2 plus negative 15. My signs are the same, which means I'm going to add, and I'm going to get 17. And I keep the sign of the largest absolute value, which is negative. So I'm going to put that up here, minus 17. Now I need to see if there's anything else I can combine. I see that I have a positive 6h and a positive 2h. So positive 6h plus positive 2h equals, my signs are the same, same means add, 6 plus 2 is 8. Keep your variable. So now I have 8h, and it's positive. So I'm going to put that up here, plus 8h. So 6g minus 2 plus 6h minus 12g minus 15 plus 2h is equivalent to negative 6g minus 17 plus 8h. So all we're saying is this is the same thing as this. We just simplified it and made it easier for us to solve once we get to equations. This is an expression. This is an expression. It is not solvable because we do not know what g is equal to and we do not know what h is equal to. 
every year I have kids who want to solve it and they're like, but I can't go any further. And I'm like, well, you're not supposed to go any further. You're just simplifying. So just know that you are just simplifying. You're not solving yet. Okay, I think that's enough and let's go ahead and get started on our work for today. Good luck and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.